So I'd like to welcome Richard Abercrombie. Now, I first met Richard in 2010 when he journeyed to our side of the world, the good side of the world, to um, get us on our way with uh, practicing practicing the TWI routines. We started with JI, from what I recall, uh, JR actually, and then went and then JR and then JM, and that was back 2010, 2011. I was impressed at the time by Richard's commitment and dedication, not only to TWI, but also to his style of delivery. And I remember when he went back first time after the first trip, I said to Ben, my business partner, I said, we need to completely change everything, the way we deliver all our content and get away from death by PowerPoint and go to the style that we saw from TWI and from Richard in particular. He's a wealth of knowledge and I'd like to welcome you, Richard, to this discussion. Thank you for giving us the time. Thank you very much, Oscar. And uh, <clears throat> I would like to say that it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to uh, have this conversation with you as professional colleagues, which you became. <laughs> uh, I've always enjoyed our conversation. So thank you very much. No problem. I appreciate it. So the title of this webinar is Human Problems of the Industrial uh, Organization Addressed by TWI. And how do we help management keep sight of this? So firstly, Richard, that title has two sentences. Can you please spend a couple of minutes on those for, on those two sentences and describe, uh, illustrate how they're connected? Okay, so um, uh, uh, now that you've put it into two parts, let me see if I can remember them. <laughs> The first part the is first part, uh, human problems of the industrial organization addressed he, by TWI is the first uh, part. human problems. And so um, to discuss that for a moment, let's uh, pause and consider what do we mean by a problem? Because uh, the word problem uh, in our language, uh, English, but in many languages, uh, one word has more than one meaning. Um, there is a negative meaning to the word problem. Oh, gosh, uh, we have a big problem. We're in trouble. Uh, but the context of uh, problem in our statement here, uh, human problems, uh, has to do with just human nature. In other words, they are not so much problems like something has gone bad, but if we don't address the aspects of the human element, uh, then uh, we are overlooking uh, uh, things that will become a problem. Uh, because uh, uh, it involves human nature, and uh, we're not all exactly the same way. And uh, so uh, in an industrial organization or environment, uh, it's important for us to consider those human problems as a part of the approach of management. Now, the second part, as I recall, Oscar, is uh, how do we get management to remember that? So just hold there. That fascinates me. You know, I've known you for 14 years and and I've never thought of it that way. I've never, I've always um, probably done what 99% of us do and focus on the word problem. But I've never thought of it that, that, um, that humans are just part of the system and we have a nature and there are things that we're going to do that are going to require some attention for want of a better way to describe it. That it's just a brilliant way to look at it. In other words, it's inevitable. It's not a negative thing. It's just an, it's an, it's an inevitable need. It's an inevitable requirement to be able to address these sort of things. I love that and I love that thinking. Great start. In fact, uh, uh, out there uh, uh, in the world, there's a uh, reference to a comment that was made by a Toyota executive who visited uh, North American uh, operations and uh, was uh, given several presentations, like you mentioned earlier, Oscar, some PowerPoint presentations. And uh, when it was his turn to address uh, the uh, the whole management group, he said, well, that was wonderful, but I'd like to know what your problems are. If you don't tell me what they are, I can't help you. And so that's yes. the context that we have here. If we don't think about uh, aspects of the human uh, part of the organization, then uh, how can we figure out ways to um, address those uh, aspects? And someone's just sent in a, re and a, a really good question. And I don't know their first name, but their surname, it's uh, it's European by the look of it, F. Beholtz. But their question is, 
How do we get management to remember the point you just made? So um, I, I think that's an excellent question. And what I mean by that question. is, what I mean by that is that I have thought about that ever since uh, this we began to plan this uh, webinar. How do you remind? Uh, how do you get management to remember that? And the more I thought about it, the more it boiled down to something really simple. Uh, we just have to remind them about it. So, Oscar, you probably uh, brush your teeth every morning, don't you? I brush my teeth morning and evening, Richard. Okay. Now, then, uh, there was a time in your life when you didn't think that was a very good idea, right? Correct. But I, I'm also guessing that your mother, she reminded you on a regular basis to brush your teeth, didn't she? Yeah, very perceptive. So, so that's kind of an analogy of what I'm referring to. We need to remind management about the fact that there are people in the organization and it has to be something that is not just a one-off. Oh yeah, we thought about that. <clears throat> but rather it has to be something that's considered in just about everything that we do whenever people are going to be involved. So reminding them is a good way to get them to remember it. And is that reminder just a verbal thing or a, you know, a verbal statement, or do you think there's going to be other ways? What, 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 other, what other ways may there be to remind them? And I'm looking, I'm, I'm seeking something out here. Well, uh, this is the point where it becomes a bit more complicated. <laughs> right. And uh, let me start off by saying this, regardless um, of your thoughts, if you're going to remind management of something that they've lost sight of, uh, you have to keep in mind that there is a chain of command. Fundamentally, the organization is structured such that there is a, an arrangement by which we uh, you know, can uh, communicate effectively. And we often refer to that as the chain of command. I report to my supervisor, for example, and so if I have wonderful ideas about how the company should be run, I probably should talk first with my supervisor. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I got caught out very badly by that a uh, number of years ago and ended up not working for the organization as a result <laughs> of their directive. Yeah. So I do know what you mean there. So uh, once you've uh, kind of kept that in your own mind uh, about following the chain of command, uh, you then have to kind of use uh, uh, some basic um, principles of salesmanship <laughs> yes. and that kind of like marketing. And so um, to make that really simple, uh, if you're going to sell, you have to find out what people are buying. Otherwise, you're not going to end up actually selling. You're going to think you're selling, but if nobody buys anything, you haven't sold anything, Right. So what is management, generally speaking, always looking for to buy? And um, this, let me give you the answer to that question there. Uh, results is a good way of putting that. Uh, management, you know, they have a brain just like everybody else, but they like to spend most of their brain time on how do we produce results that the business needs. So if we are to remind management of the importance of the human factor in this industrial organization, how can we express that in terms of results? And so results is, are giving me things like getting production out, uh, making sure that we don't have a lot of uh, equipment damage, uh, accidents, uh, liabilities, and so forth and so on. There are quite a few uh, areas that management uh, continues to spend a lot of their attention on having to do with results. So if we're reminding them of something in a way that ties it to uh, either getting or preventing results, they're going to pay attention. So um, on that, it makes perfect sense. On that notion, I guess, if we can, if we can politely illustrate examples where human nature has negatively affected results and positively reflected results rather than just tell them, I imagine that would help. So that's, in other words, that really, that, that really in other words Billy talent. did this, we, Billy did this and we saw the, re, and this was the outcome. 
and we can see the quality went up or productivity went up or whatever. And Tommy did that and it went down. So rather than just, uh, I guess that reminder in my mind needs to be qualified by examples. Because if we can provide examples, would it be fair to say our chances of convincing them might increase? Of, of the quality of the reminder might increase. So, um, so when you're in the organization yourself, it's not that difficult to find out what are the metrics. Sometimes they're called KPIs, key performance indicators, that are on, um, on the table uh, within the current strategy of the company. And so that's your resource for looking at it from that perspective when there is a concern about the use of the human resources within that system. And so uh, the, the classical, so to speak, the common uh, metrics of production are uh, quantity. In other words, we have to meet our quotas and uh, meet the schedule and get everything out. Um, but we also have KPIs around the quality of that output, so forth and so on. I mean, this is not rocket science. Any modern industrial organization uh, has to monitor these aspects of performance and have some way of quantifying it or measuring it. And then when the strategy uh, topic comes up, it shapes uh, the strategy of the company on what direction to go in with our efforts. So in other words, uh, we want to bring that uh, um, top management um, responsibility into terms that relate to the shop floor. And, and in your time, I guess I think we've all met, we've all worked for them. Certainly met them, or all worked for them. There's, there's, you know, there's a, a quantity, a fair quantity of managers are out there who, um, who will verbally acknowledge that human nature is an influencer on results, but they don't really buy it, um, and they don't buy that that's a factor in something, a factor that they have to. A build an understanding of and some management of, for want of a better word. What's your thoughts, or have you had any instances where you've had success in convincing a manager that's not human minded, if you like, that actually humans are a big part of the system and we need to take that into account if we're going to have true success? Have you had any example? Can you give us any examples where you've been able to convince, take someone who's not convinced of that and get them uh, over the line or move them in that direction of, yes, humans are part of the system. How might we do that? Because I think we face those managers frequently. Well, you know, one way to answer your question there, Oscar, is to give the example of TWI because uh, when uh, TWI was being, let's just say, put together, this is back in World War II, uh, this was a serious concern by... Um, uh, the war effort, let me just put it that way, that uh, we had um, almost instantly, we had very inexperienced supervisors, many of whom uh, uh, would show the characteristics that are quite common even still to this day of uh, trying to simplify the task by using stereotypes and pigeonholing uh, people into certain basic kind of like formulas. Kind of like uh, there's a mold, you put something in it and the same thing comes out every time. And so people uh, sometimes are thought of that way. And um, <clears throat> it isn't because they're a manager who thinks that way is bad. It's just that they're trying to simplify their job. And yep. so good they, point. Really they good try point. to just say, I can size up a person in, in 10 seconds. And uh, this person is a, a doer, this person's a lazy guy and uh, you know, we reach these conclusions and then base everything else on that. Uh, JR, the purpose of it was uh, to a large extent to address that challenge with uh, the first level of management in any production uh, situation um, <clears throat> so that uh, supervisors could be more effective in their role of leadership in the production area. And so uh, JR actually, um, you know, those of you that are familiar with the content of our uh, JR 10 hour training, um, we mentioned this very briefly, but it would really was the rationale behind the TWI service 
actually putting a focus on coming up with something that could be useful in helping supervisors deal with people, not with bad people, but with people generally, uh, yeah. because they have to form a team and we have to win the war, uh, right? These days we have to build a team and win the competition, but the same idea is there. Uh, in terms of competition, those um, companies whose management system puts uh, the human factor into the forefront will have a competitive edge over those who put it into the background or delegate it to a functional department uh, who would uh, please go out and uh, do as much as you can, but don't slow us down uh, kind of an approach. And so uh, that also is something that we can um, use as tr trying to remember, trying to remind management. Uh, it's not because this is a, um, a you know, a, uh, a, a society of um, uh, people who just like to have good thoughts and stuff like that, but it's no. required by the job. In order to be successful in a competitive market, we have to effectively utilize those resources which are difficult because they're more complicated than the formulas that we use on so many things. Formulas are really great because they can be uh, you know, done again and again, but with people, we have to continue that and make it a continuum as a way of putting it. I think you can summarize that. What I heard you say there in summary was that, and we get it all the time, and I think I fall into this trap too, is is you hear we need JR because we have people problems. What I heard you say there is we need JR because people are part of our system. So we're going to need an element. We're going to need some, because people are part of our system, we're going to need some skill to, to lead that part of the system. Like we need engineering skill to run the machines and we need, uh, say, if you're in a food plant, food technology skills to do the ingredients and all that stuff. Well, if people are part of our system, we're going to need JR skills. It's not because there's right. a problem, it's because people are there. That makes but, perfect sense. But but notice that it's not just JR and then you're okay. No. Uh, the, the TWI service, when they started, they didn't have, uh, um, uh, it was a blank slate. Let me just put it that way. Uh, the idea of these three J programs didn't happen uh, until over time until it became something that we know now uh, by the end of the war. But uh, what the TWI service found is that uh, there's hardly anything, uh, any type of business uh, challenge uh, that involves people that could not have some assistance by using all of the TWI programs. Yeah. So for supervisors, these three basic programs uh, cover much of the territory having to do with the challenge of integrating people into an industrial environment. If they don't know how to do the job or they can't do the jobs uh, 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 efficiently, job instruction will help any supervisor address that challenge. Yeah. Okay, if people don't care or they uh, don't get along, don't want to do it, JR is very helpful for that. And when we talk about having engaged employees who are part of a team effort, Job methods is a way to have operators step into a meaningful role in helping management make sure that the operations run smoothly with a constant eye to the elimination of non-value added, we call that waste. It, you know, uh, uh, Henry Ford uh, himself said, if it doesn't add value, it's waste, we should get rid of it. And uh, so these skills uh, are a way of shaping the thinking of uh, any level of management, specifically the first level in uh, um, meeting the challenges of integrating people into that organization. So Richard, when you were at Boeing, when you worked, which I know was some time back, um, were you, did, was, was any, were there any of the aspects of, or any of the routines of TWI present then? I'm sorry, so I didn't quite uh, catch the first few words. When you were at Boeing and you worked oh, at okay. Boeing, was any of the TWI routines being practiced back then? Uh, no. Right. We'll take that question out of it. Um, 
So well, let me, well, let me, uh, let me, what I was going to ask you is, did you ever have to sell it up? Did you ever have to sell it to management at, at Boeing up the tree? And I've wondered what experiences you had there, you personally. So let me just uh, <clears throat> point this out to you. Uh, at the uh, Boeing company, I was a supervisor. And so I learned how to supervise at the Boeing company. And uh, uh, generally speaking, one could characterize it as something like take names, make lists and kick ass. Uh, right. So it was the it was the boss style was right. uh, was the context in which I was a supervisor. So later, as I became involved in lean manufacturing, and that wasn't TWI, but became right. involved in lean manufacturing, I began to see more clearly that my uh, style and manner of supervision was part of the problem. Yeah, and yeah, it right. was it was after I retired from Boeing uh, that I. Uh, uh, found out about Bob Rona and Patrick Brow, and uh, I said, "I need this. I want. I need to talk to you guys." And that's when I found out uh, the kind of supervisor I should have been. Yeah, right. Um, he said, "Back to this, you know, the title of the webinar, which is um, keep helping, keep manage, helping management keep side of this." We've got, uh, I think what's come <clears throat> pretty, what's become pretty clear so far in this conversation that human nature, we're dealing with human nature, not human problems. That's an under underpinning thing, I guess. Um, further thoughts on getting, uh, I think the HR, the HR department probably, probably, maybe it's a bit of an assumption, already recognises that. The operations department, which is often the people who need to be most convinced to give TWI a crack if it's going to be successful, any thoughts on operations people and how we keep them mindful that that, that human that humans are part of the system and human nature is something we need to be able to um, lead or maintain, if you like, in the same way that we maintain machines. Any thoughts on the on operations people and how we keep keep this front of mind for them? So first, I, I, a caveat, so to speak, is that uh, TWI is not for one part of the organization. TWI is a, a model of practices <clears throat> that can be applied at every level of the organization up to and including the board of directors and the stockholders. Now, that having said the above, <clears throat> um, uh, of course, at whatever level you apply TWI, it has to be appropriate for that level. So there will be differences in that regard. At the operational level, it's part of daily work routine management. It is a model by which you can ensure that you have a well-trained workplace, that standards are in place of being used. It means that you can create the, uh, a collaborative environment in which people uh, uh, have the desire to contribute. And then it, uh, it also stimulates the creativity that's inherent in human beings. So in that sense, uh, it applies uh, everywhere, but it should not be delegated to a functional assignment like, oh, it's just no. for the floor, or it's just for HR, or it's just for anything. Uh, everybody has to participate. Um, does that answer the question? Uh, uh, yes and no. I think I get that. It's how do we convince, um, oh. it's getting back to keeping keeping this front of, Keeping the importance of TWI um, and front of mind for management and particularly operations. Um, and my experience is that operations are the ones most tend to be the most impacted. They're certainly the most impacted by JI. So how do we keep management, um, keep the humanistic side of TWI important to them, particularly operations? Well, uh, again, I would uh, like to, uh, you know, work is one of those words that applies to quite a few different things. But uh, we do have this understanding that all work must be highly specified as to content, sequence, timing, and outcome. That includes management work. Yeah, In other right. words, uh, there's an organization that we call the operations, but then there's the organization of the site management. There's the organization of, uh, you know, integrating the whole company. Uh, the work for managing that entire enterprise has to be highly specified. And so we should look at management work from that perspective. Have we made 
the specifications uh, to the situation that we're uh, managing. Uh, and uh, so that's uh, relatively easy to see at the operations level because we have jobs. And so that's what yeah, we're sure. talking about. But uh, if I'm the VP of manufacturing, I have a job too. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and I guess it's the it's a, a bringing attention to the fact that human nature, by nature, creates variability. So, and we've got to work, my understanding, certainly from operations point of view, is we've got to reduce variability. Human nature is such that it increases the chance of variability. So that's, to me, that's one of the important parts of it is um, we accept that human nature is in there, we're going to get variability from it. So we have to have just as the same way you'd get variability from a poorly maintained machine. If we have a yeah. poorly maintained human, we're going to get increased variability. So we almost yeah. need to see it in the, to see them in the same light. So um, I, I realize that we're short on time. Uh, may I have the uh, uh, permission to actually read something to you? Because um, I like to put things into word myself, but sometimes other people do it better than I do. And uh, this addresses the point that you just brought forward. So it'll just take a moment. Let me uh, make this uh, statement to you. So it has to be remembered that to the employee, uh, a job means more than just a paycheck every two weeks or doing mechanical operations over and over between opening and closing hours. To the employee, it means that they are part of an organization wherein they have a particular place. It means that they are human beings who wonder uh, what kind of people their fellow workers are. They wonder uh, what their fellow workers are going to expect of them. How should they approach their supervisor, so forth and so on. Consequently, job training is more than just teaching a skill, a procedure, or a technique. It includes uh, helping the employee to adjust themselves to their surroundings, giving them an idea of the organization which they are a part of and in their particular part, and how to fill that part in that organization. That um, is the rationale behind PWI, to help yeah. integrate people into an organization that is based on people. Yeah, 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 right. Lovely, great summary. Thank you for that. One last thing, and this you maybe have done it, but uh, but but that's it would be have to be a, a big elevator with going up many floors. Um, Dave Hill has asked for an elevator. Said an elevator speech on the TWIJ programs. So how would you? Any thoughts on capturing what you just said into a, an elevator speech where you've got a span of attention of maybe twenty seconds? Well, uh, before the elevator door closes, you can say. TWI is a standard uh, program which develops the essential skills of supervision. Fair enough. Very good. Richard, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Well, we could go on a lot longer, I know, but I've always valued our uh, interactions and conversations, and sometimes I, I frequently regret that we're 12,000 miles away and I can't spend more time with you. But okay. uh, appreciate your knowledge, and I'm sure everyone who listened and joined, appreciated um, what you've put forth. And thank you very, very much for your time. And everyone, back to Lean Frontiers. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Oscar and Richard, thank you so much for joining us. Um, also, just a quick reminder, within 24 to 48 hours, you will receive a link from me. And everybody, have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks again, Bye. Richard. Thanks, Lane, for years.